sure this is what that is. I know it's weird to be here at 3.15 ish. I'm a little late. But I have youth tonight and I have missed two nights in a row because I have been having conversations with some of my friends. So I thought I would jump on here and um, share with you right now. And maybe I can start doing this every Wednesday and maybe I can be more consistent. Keep saying I want to be more consistent, but I keep not being my hair's clean and that's about all that I can say for it. But I'm going to youth tonight to share the love of Jesus with a younger generation. Maybe I should have, uh, I did take my trash out a while ago, so I don't know. Some of these stray hairs could be from the wind, but it is what it is. All right. Well, tonight, I mean, today, <laughs> it's not tonight. That's really hard. Today, we're going to do Psalms 55 and 56. And we are about a quarter of the way through Psalms, which is great. That is great. Well, let's open up in prayer and we're going to do this. I need to get done so I can go and uh, get my son's bath set up uh, instead of his dinner. That's what we do on Wednesday afternoons. And um, anyway. Let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you for all the things that you do for us, God. You are our provider, God. You are on your throne and you are in control and there is nothing that you don't see. You see all these things that are going on, God. You know details that we don't even know. You know solutions and you know outcomes, God, and you even know the why. We will probably never know the why of some of the things that happen in our country and all over the world, but God, you do. You know everything, God. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness all sin according to your word, according to your truths, and not that of the world, according to yours. And God, we just thank you because you are caring and kind and compassionate and loving, forgiving. You are faithful, God. You are trustworthy, God. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to um, remember the relationship that they once had with you and to return and repent and be reconciled, God. I know you keep telling me that salvation and reconciliation are most important to you right now, that your children, the ones that you know that are your children, need to come to the saving grace of Jesus, and the ones that have strayed away need to return to you, God, to be reconciled. Salvation and reconciliation, those are two things that you keep talking to me about plus being obedient, and when we aren't obedient, that we miss out on the on your blessings. And God, we just pray. There are so many things that are going on, things that I don't even know about that have happened today, God, but you are aware of. God, we just pray. We pray, God, that, um, that you would be with these people that they would feel your presence, God, that they would feel our prayers, that if they've lost loved ones, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength and healing. And if they have been injured, God, that you would heal their bodies where they are. God, we just pray for a Jesus movement that can't be stopped. 
And we pray for others that have lost loved ones, God, either to illness or other things, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for people that are sick, God. We just pray that uh, their bodies would be healed. And we just pray, God, that you would give them strength. And we pray that you would give their family strength also and their friends. And we ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, that was our prayer. So my name is Charm. And maybe I'm getting an audience that I normally don't get. My calling, I feel like God called me in 2018 to share his truths through his word and to share the gospel of Jesus. So that's what I do. I come on here. And I share some of God's word. Read it right out of the Bible. I'm open for discussion if anyone wants to discuss in the comments. Um, you can leave whatever you want to in the comments, good or bad. Um, I do want to develop a community. And I may start doing this on Wednesdays. I may start doing it on other days too. It seems like night time. I am running into conflicts at night. So I may start doing this at this time because it might be an answer to my schedule problems. But anyway, we are going to read 55 and 56. Okay. And um, I'm reading New King James Version. I have a King James Version that I do my Bible study with. I found this study Bible and I really like it. It's a ladies study Bible. Okay, 55. True trust. Trust in God concerning the treachery of friends. To the chief musician with stringed instruments, a contemplation of David. So this is another psalm of David, okay? Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearlessness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. So have you ever felt like that before? Have you ever felt, you know, just in tremendous pain and you just want to escape? That is what David wanted to do. He just wanted to escape. His enemies had brought a lot on him and he was just looking for an escape. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in, in its midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throng. Let death seize them. Let them go down alive into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, this is the turnaround. This is the, the beginning is just really downcast. It's really downcast and a little bit depressing, really. But that's how David felt. David felt oppressed. David felt brokenhearted. David probably was feeling these things because David was not a perfect man. He was a sinful man. But he was a repentant man, too. And he would repent from time to time. 
which is what we have to do as Christians. We have to repent of our sins. We have to ask for forgiveness. Okay. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old, because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. So that that was a lot. That was maybe more than I can figure out on my own. So let's go to the study portion of that. The poet lashed out at his enemies. Okay, so David was lashing out at his enemies, but the betrayal of his friend hurt the most. Okay, somebody close to him betrayed him. Jesus faced the same heartbreak when Ju Judas, one of his 12 disciples, betrayed him. That's so true. Judas was one of the apostles, and he betrayed Jesus with a kiss on the cheek, with a kiss on the cheek. For the younger generations, I have to be specific. The psalmist did the right thing in pouring out his grief to God, who always remains faithful. Those who trust in him will remain firmly established in life's difficult times. They will not be shaken. So we need, we have to trust God, even in these times of turmoil that we are in that are going on, like in other states. I live in Texas. I feel quite blessed to be here. In other states, there is so much oppression from their governments on the people. And we have to trust God in that. Even when we don't understand, we must trust God. We must. We have to. Like I prayed a while ago, he knows every detail. There's something going on in your life and you think you know all the details. God knows details that you don't even know. And he knows all the solutions. So he is who we go to for the solutions. And he already knows the outcome. And like I said a while ago, he knows the why. He knows the why. He knows the hearts and the minds involved. He knows it all. Okay, so let's go on to Psalm 56. And if you have any comments about Psalm 55, please put them in the comments. If you like this channel, please like it and subscribe, okay? Psalm 56, Prayer for Relief of Tormentors. Uh, to the chief musician set to the silent dove in distant lands, a Mitchum of David, when Philistines captured him in Gath. Okay, be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? All day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather together. They hide. They mark my steps. When they lie in wait for my life, shall they escape by iniquity? In anger cast down to the peoples, O God, you number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? 
When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, have I put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? So that's kind of a a repetition of the end of this. About the, in God, I will praise his word. I'm looking back to see. In God, I have put my trust. Vows made to you are binding upon me. O oh God, I will render praises to you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? So again, David trusts God. He trusts God with everything that he has. And as Christians, we need to trust God with everything that we have. I know I had something going on in my life today, and I was kind of in turmoil about it. But after my quiet time, I felt only joy and peace. We need that time to go to God, to lay those things at his feet and let him attend to them. We worry about the stupidest things that really don't make any difference to God. You know, he owns everything. He is the one that has blessed me with everything I have, you know, and I'm thankful and I'm grateful for everything that I have, for all the people that God has blessed me with in my life, in family and friends and even acquaintances that I see when I go to the grocery store, you know, there are uh, God's children everywhere. And potential God's children everywhere. Maybe God's children that haven't been saved yet. And maybe a kind word or a hug or a, you know, hey, you go before me. You know, you don't have as much stuff. You go before me. I have done that before so many times. It's just a little gesture. But if somebody's in a hurry and they don't have much and I've got a whole basket full of stuff, I would rather them go first. Because I'm usually not in that big of a hurry. Anyway, we must trust God. So um, the study part of this says, No one can overcome the individual who trusts in God. The superscription identifies this psalm with David's capture by the Philistines in Gath. Although not actually seized, David was frightened by the pursuit. So David was being pursued. David was being pursued all the time. Sometimes even his own family. That was my husband. He never calls me at this time. Uh, call him in a minute. I am not going to be on here for much longer. So that was Psalms 55 and 56. I'm going to do a really short, 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 short salvation message. Salvation is the most important decision you can make in your life. And so do you know the ABCs of life? I'm going to read them to you. And if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior today, then do not continue to wait because Jesus is coming back. And once people see Jesus, hold on a second. Okay, oh, all right, I'll let pause for a second. Anyway, once you see Jesus come into the clouds, it is too late. So please be saved now. That is why I do this. My heart breaks for people that are unsaved. I don't want anyone, God doesn't want anyone to be left behind, and I don't either. Okay, do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth, John 10, 10. And he wants you to spend eternity with him, 2 Peter 3, 9. To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a Savior. We all need Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only path to God. And we all need a, sa a Savior, and Jesus is the Savior. 
sins annoyingly. We've all disobeyed God, sinned, and earned separation from God, which is death. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23. No matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Believe in Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John three sixteen, Commit your life to Christ. A, B, C. Admit, believe, commit. Commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord here on earth. In your same... Oh, that's so annoying. Uh, Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is the prayer. It's very short. If you want to say it, repeat it. If, if you want to say your own words, repeat them. The most important thing, admit that you need a Savior, that you need forgiveness. Believe that, believe in Jesus Christ and commit your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust in you alone for eternal life. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, if you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and um, the angels are rejoicing closer to God, then read his word every day, just like I read. You don't have to read a lot. Just read something and pray. Start in, like start in Matthew and pray every day and find you some praise music. I was going to share a praise song today, but I didn't have time. I will start making time though. This is a blessing from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that is in number 624 through 26. Like I said today, I did not have. I had confusion before I went and did my quiet time. Then I had joy and peace. So don't forsake that time with God every day. Have an awesome rest of your day and have an awesome evening. I will be at youth later. And have an awesome tomorrow. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night or good afternoon. <laughs> I'm not used to doing this in the afternoon. Good afternoon and good night. <laughs>